Hello everyone, welcome to the first lecture of Easy Programming. My name is Yao and I am the founder of Build to Master. At Build to Master, we help high school students to learn computer programming by building their own project. So in this lecture series, you will be learning the basics of computer programming so that one day you can build your own project as well. If that day comes and you need some help, let us know and we will see how we can help you. In lecture 1 today, we will be learning CPU, memory and non-volatile storage. We will look at how these components relate to computer programming. This will give you a better understanding of computer programming when you actually get started. So with this, let's move on to our first topic and that is CPU. Okay, so before we talk about CPU, let's take a look at how a program works. Every single program looks like this, and they contain many lines of code uh, that is shown here. In this example, we only have four lines of code. The central processing unit, or your CPU, will need to run each line of this code in sequence. The CPU is one of the most important components of your computer. Without it, you cannot run any program on it. And that would be a really sad world, don't you think so? So let me get back to my discussion here. Sorry, our discussion here. I want to explain a bit more on how a CPU runs your program typically. And it starts like this. The CPU will run the top and the first line here, followed by the second one, and it will go down all the way to the bottom. So, most of you probably already know this already, but I want to point this out. Um, all CPU has a clock in it, and the faster the clock on the CPU is, the faster you can run each line of code here. Okay, and this is all I wanted to share with you on CPU. So let me summarize a few key points in this section here. So first of all, program, let me increase the font size, program consists of many lines of code. And the second point I want to want you want you to remember is CPU is responsible to run this code in sequence. Okay, so next up, let's talk about computer memory. Just like the CPU. Um, the memory is a very important component as well, right? All program needs to use the memory. The memory is also known as random access memory or just RAM for short. Usually we like to visualize our memory as block, blocks like this. You might wonder what is it used for? Well, your program use uh, the memory to store data into it and to read data out of it. So program stores data into memory and reads data out from memory. So each program will always use up a certain amount of memory. The more it use up, uh, the more it would consume your memory and if you have a lot of large programs that eats up a lot of memory you will eventually run out of memory space if you run out of your memory space your computer will hang or it will just die up to this point you might be wondering well why 
Why do program needs to store memory, memory, store data into memory or read data out of memory? And there are two reasons why we need to do this. The first reason is you need to use, sorry, you need to reuse calculation, some calculation results that you have right now in the future. Okay, so you, you need to reuse uh, the calculated result that you have now in the near future. The second reason is you want to maintain state in your program and so you store data into memory. To illustrate uh, these two reasons here, uh, let's talk about Angry Birds. So here we have a picture of Angry Birds. I'm sure most of you have played Angry Birds before. And the goal of Angry Birds is to shoot the birds and destroy the pigs. The score is added to the top right hand corner here. And to keep track of the total score, we will need to store the total score, this total score here, into memory. So we store it in somewhere here. And here's the reason why we need to uh, store it into memory. The next time, so let's say you have destroyed some peaks and you obtain a total score here. The next time that you destroy more peaks, you need to add the new obtained score into the total score. But if your total score is nowhere to be found, how are you going to accumulate the total score, right? That is why you need to, uh, you need to store your total score into memory and when, and when you destroy more peaks the next time, then you read out the total score, you read out the previously total score from memory, and then add in the newly obtained score into the previous total score. Now you get your new total score. I know it's a bit uh, confusing for now, but uh, eventually, if you go on to a few more lectures, you will see this happen quite often and you will just make sense out of it. So the reason why we uh, store things in the memory, one of the, the first reason is, you know, you want to reuse calculated re uh, your calculated result. In my first example here, it's all about the total score. So hopefully, uh, at this point, you understand what we mean by storing data into memory to reuse calculation result. Let's see what would be a state in Angry Birds. So the first thing that comes to my mind is this birds, sorry, the number of birds that you have here. So let me tell you, let, let me explain why this is a state. Um, it is a state because the number of birds helps the game to decide if you have lost the game. Angry Birds needs to store the number of birds available in memory to determine if you have lost the game. When you have zero birds left and you haven't killed all the pigs, then you lose, right? And that is why the number of birds is a state. It helps the game to determine if you have lost the game. I hope that um, this helps you to understand why uh, we need to store data in memory to maintain state in your program. Okay, so hopefully you have understand these two reasons here. If you don't, don't worry about it. I'm sure that uh, in the next few lecture, we will have more chance uh, to touch on this topic here. So next, let's turn our focus to one special characteristic of memory. And it is the fact that it cannot store data permanently. So what exactly does this mean? It means that 
when you turn off the power on your computer or cell phone devices, all the data in memory will be wiped clean. So any data in this memory here is all empty. And we call this type of characteristic volatile. Okay. So I think it's time to wrap up this section by summarizing some of the key points. So here are the three things that I hope that you can re remember. So number one, program use memory to store data and to read data. We need to store and read data because A, we want to reuse calculation results and B, we want to maintain state in our program. And the last thing that you should remember is memory cannot store data permanently. And that is all I have to summarize. To move on to the next topic, uh, I want to begin with a question. I'm sure all of you have played games on your phone, computer, or consoles. If your memory cannot store things permanently, how can you so how can your game remember which level are you at or which state sorry which stage have you cleared and so on? Why don't you pause this video for a minute and think about it? I will review the answer in the next section. So the reason your games can remember the level that your character have reached and the stage that you have cleared is because those data are stored on non-volatile storage. So what are non-volatile storage exactly? They are devices that do not erase data even after you turn off the power. So here are a few examples that we have listed here. The most common one is your hard drive on your computer, followed by the SD card on your phones. And those which are, le uh, which are used less these days, and they are USB keys and uh, Blu-ray discs. So since we have talked about how games store data, Let's look at how software like games makes use of the CPU, storage, and memory during the startup process as well as the save process. When the software starts up, it asks the CPU to copy data from your storage into your memory. Now this copy process has to be completed before you can fully use your application. And it's pretty simple, right? Everything just moves from storage into your memory. This is why when you bring up an app, sometimes you have to wait for a while before you can actually use the app, right? So let's take a look at the inverse or the reverse of, of the application startup process. And this is called the safe process. And the save process, I'm sure all of us have done it before. For example, you play a game, you have to save the game. If not, it won't save automatically. Because remember, data is stored on memory. And memory is volatile. You have to press save to ask the CPU to save onto the storage. Okay? So the process is pretty simple, the save process. When you hit save, you are telling the CPU what are the important data that you need to save. So the CPU knows which important data in memory needs to go into storage. It fetches those data and write it into storage. That's all it is. So that is your safe process. So I have a question to ask you. Now we know that storage is non-volatile, meaning it can store things permanently. 
So a good question to ask is uh, why do we still need memory here? Because memory is non-volatile. Sorry, memory is vol volatile, but storage is non-volatile. Wouldn't it be better if we just store everything uh, on storage? Then we don't have to go through this copy process, right? And we don't have to do the save process. Everything is stored onto there automatically. Before we ask, yeah, so, so why do we need to do that? Perhaps it's not possible? Well, that's why we don't do it. Well, it turns out that you can actually really remove memory and store things on storage and make your store. So basically you're trying to make your storage look like memory. That is actually possible. And that's why you have things called swap and stuff like that. But I won't go into details of those stuff. So it is possible. But the reason why we are still using memory, memory these days is because of the following. Non-volatile storage, if you choose to save data, if, you, if your application uses storage to run, to store data and to read data, it will make the application really, really slow. Really, really slow. And the reason is non-volatile storage are really slow by design. Okay? So that is why we still need to use memory because memory, memory is much faster than storage. So, so far, we have seen some difference between memory, memory and storage. And let me try to summarize the difference for you. So first of all, memory is a volatile device, whereas storage is not a volatile device. Secondly, the read and write speed of your memory is fast, but your storage is slow. And of course, that's the reason why we still have memory memory around or your RAM around. Otherwise, storage will just take over everything. Okay, so that's all I have. And I think it's time to wrap up this section. This is also the end of the lecture. So let me uh, summarize the three key points you need to re remember in this section. Number one non-volatile storage can store data even after power is turned off let me zoom increase the font size okay secondly storage are slow when it comes to storing and reading data and this is why remember when your application starts up it takes a bit of time because we are copying stuff from storage the storage storage is really slow when it comes to reading data and storing data and then lastly um, your program needs to work with storage and memory sorry and memory when sorry during start up and the save process okay yeah so these are the three key points that you should re remember and this is the end of lecture one let me remind you what uh, we have talked about we have talked about CPU memory memory and non-volatile storage. We have seen how this components relates to a program, sorry, to the operation of a program. So if you have any questions or suggestions, just leave a comment below in this video or contact us through our, uh, through our website. So be sure to tune in to our next lecture where we will be talking about the tools that you will need to start programming. Okay guys, uh, happy programming and I'll see you next time.